Welcome to The Heart's Treasure. I'm Monsignor Frank Chido, the pastor of St. Anthony's Church in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, my normal and my f favorite co-host, uh, John Gaffney, is uh, unavailable today. And so I'll be uh, conducting uh, the, this session all on my own. And uh, I, I enter into this endeavor with fear and trepidation. But anyway, <laughs> uh, today we have uh, as a guest on The Heart's Treasure, Mr. Andy Milam. Welcome, Andy. Well, God bless you. you. God bless you. And we're going to be visiting in a moment with Andrew about his own uh, faith story, his journey uh, uh, to this point in life, and how the Lord has uh, brought him to this point. And uh, he's got some interesting uh, uh, stories about his past and so forth that we're going to be visiting about, particularly in terms of liturgy and the great Monsignor Schuler from St. Agnes and, and Minneapolis, St. Paul. But we want to begin uh, with a moment of prayer. And I'd like to uh, begin this uh, heart's treasure with a, an excerpt from Psalm 49. Hear this, all you peoples. Hearken, all who dwell in the world. Of lowly birth or high degree, rich and poor alike. My mouth shall speak wisdom. Prudence shall be the utterance of my heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever shall, shall be, be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, the reason I, I picked that particular uh, psalm is because it talks about the Lord speaking wisdom and, and asking us to hear or to listen. Uh, remember, Brother Peter, when we followed the rule of St. Benedict, the first uh, word in the great rule of St. Benedict was listen. And uh, over and over again in the scripture, the Lord uses the term listen or hear. And, uh, and that's so important in terms of our own, our own faith life, to uh, listen to what God is telling us uh, to do with our lives, and in particular, what he's asking us to do uh, in terms of vocation. Uh, the Lord calls us to, uh, to the single life, uh, the, con the dedicated uh, single life, the faithful single life, perhaps. The Lord may be calling us to the priesthood or religious life, and or the Lord may be calling us to uh, the married life. But the Lord has a plan, and he's asking us in the words of the psalmist here to, to listen or to hear the word of the Lord as it speaks to our hearts. Andy, um, I, I thank you for being with us on, is this the first time for you on TV? No. Uh, really? Close. When, Not, were you, when were you on TV before? Well, the first time I was on was in 1997 for the HLI conference in St. Paul, Minneapolis. What's HLI? Human Life International. Oh, yeah. Out of Front Royal, Virginia. Oh, really? Yeah. So you were on. So anyway, you looked real calm, so <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, what, what we're looking at, Andrew, and we, we invite uh, different guests uh, to the Heart's Treasure periodically to talk about their faith life and, and what God is doing for them. So um, in terms of your own life and, and when you think about how God has worked in your life uh, from the very beginning, mm -hmm. because the, the God of, uh, of our fathers uh, created us and knit us in our mother's wombs, as the scripture talks about. So t tell us a little bit uh, about your faith life. You're, up, you're from up near Sioux City. I am. I grew up in, in Humboldt, uh, Iowa. I was actually born uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. I didn't uh, know that. Yep, and uh, was baptized in 14 days. Mom was pretty strict about making sure that we were going to be, uh, be baptized and taken care of. I have a younger brother and a younger sister, and all three of us within, within two weeks were baptized. I actually have been a Catholic longer than my dad. Mm. He was going through... Uh, uh, RCIA when I was when I was born and hadn't been baptized yet so <laughs> I've yeah so he was actually baptized after I was uh -huh. which is kind of an interesting thing and brought into the church so um, but as a you know as I grew up we lived in, in Memphis for the first eight years of my life and uh, I started off by going to uh, to Catholic grade school at St. Paul the Apostle in Whitehaven on mm -hmm. Whitehaven Tennessee mm -hmm. and had the Nashville Dominicans my first two years so right from the start uh, we kind of knew as a family that we were going to get good, solid Catholic teaching. Um, you know, I have a, a very close friend within the Nashville Dominicans who was a principal there during my time there, and uh, Sister Joan Marie, and, and mm -hmm. she and you know she's always kind of stayed with me the whole way, which is a it's been a very nice thing. I've kept in touch with her throughout the years. And so when you were in grade school, yes. You had sisters in the grade school? I did, yep. When we moved to Iowa, uh, we moved to Humboldt, and Humboldt has a Catholic grade school, mm -hmm. K through 8. Um, and that grade school had presentation sisters in mm -hmm. it at the time. And again, we, got, we were very blessed by having uh, several sisters in uh, during my time 
while we were, uh, while I was growing up in Humboldt and going to grade school, um, you know, we had Sister George Marie, who was my, uh, who was the principal of the school, and then the other one that I really remember very quite quite well is Sister Ruth Ann, who was our music teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, the listening audience uh, probably is unaware, but uh, you were in the seminary for a while. I was. And when you look at uh, your vocation, uh, the sense, uh, at least uh, for a period of time in your life, that you were being called the priesthood, do you track that to your home life and to and to the school at all? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, there was always a sense of in in our family of the importance of being Catholic mm -hmm. and the importance of giving back to the church. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had it. We were we were expected to go to mass daily or weekly. Mm -hmm. We actually went daily mm -hmm. because the school at the time uh, had a daily mass, so we went every day um, up until eighth grade. We didn't have a Catholic high school in town, uh, so I went to public high school, and obviously, you know. Juggling schedules was made it hard to go to mass during mm -hmm. that time, but it was devotions continued to be a very strong thing. We pray the rosary in the family, and and it, it was a very nice thing growing up. So you know, and then once I I transitioned into college, and moved on uh, to that, you know, the seminary became something that I thought about and thought about and thought about, and then you know, as I discerned, I went back and met with a pastor in Humboldt and he and I made the decision together, really, mm -hmm. that I should at least give the vocation a try. Mm -hmm. Once that happened, um, and we went down that road, they, you know, we made the determination that through the Diocese of Sioux City that, that I should uh, go to St. Paul mm -hmm. and go to St. John Vianney Minor Seminary. Mm -hmm. um, and that's in St. Paul? That's in St. Paul. Is that Paul. still open? It is. Okay. It's actually flourishing. Oh, you're talking about the college the seminary. College I'm seminary. thinking about yeah. minor seminary no, no, high school. No, no. no. college yeah. seminary. Okay. So. Yeah, and once I got there, I, I ended up uh, obtaining degrees from the University of St. Thomas in theology, philosophy, and I'm part of the very first Catholic studies uh, degree that was offered through the Saint University of St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And they are the very first Catholic studies program in the country. So they were the prototype for the ones that are at Steubenville and Thomas Aquinas and the various other Catholic studies programs. Can you explain to the listeners and the viewers uh, a little bit about what a Catholic uh, studies program sure. is? Absolutely. Catholic studies is a interdisciplinary program that melds and moves uh, within the life of the Catholic, uh, within the life of the Catholic College. So you'll meld things like psychology, sociology, philosophy, uh, even mathematics into uh, a cat from a Catholic perspective. So there's a there's a course, you know, one of my favorite courses that I took was called Psych and Faith. Uh -huh. And what that was is they took uh, traditional secular psychology, married it to Catholic theology, and, f and formed a, a, a union. And you can see how it works and where, where the breakdowns are, but you can also see where the, where the common ground is and how they can work together. And that's what the, the essence of Catholic studies is.